So, uh, so last week was a bit nuts, wasn't it? If you, if you didn't watch last week's video, essentially what had happened was um, a research paper or a project came out from MIT talking about how they were trying to create quieter drone propellers using toroidal fan blades and shapes like that. Well, a lot of you had seen that research and asked me if I did, and at the time I hadn't. So I thank everybody that sent that my way for me to look at. But you want to know, could I take that design or one of the designs they were working with and turn it into a fan? And I can turn anything into a fan. So I said, you know, that sounds like a good idea. Let's 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 give it a shot. Uh, I had a look at what they were. I had a look at MIT's paper online. I looked at some of the designs they tested. I picked one that I thought I saw them test a lot, and one that was kind of shown a lot in illustrations on their papers. And I I did my best to recreate it. And then the internet exploded. And I was like, wow, what? That's unexpected. But what's what's next? And then I thought, you know what? I think it's your turn. After I submitted, or after I uploaded this video, I start to notice a lot of fan showdown submissions coming in that were, you know, Toyotal shaped or inspired. And um, this was not the best um, fan design. Now, obviously it was made for a drone, not a fan, so to be expected. But I wanted to see, you know, yeah, that one didn't work so well. But uh, but uh, what, what, what do you guys, what do you guys, what can you do? Today's video is sponsored by Micro Center. Are you getting ready to build a new PC but aren't sure exactly what parts you want yet or don't even really know what parts are compatible with each other. Well, good news, Micro Center can help. Micro Center has an online PC builder where you can pick out all the parts without having to worry about compatibility. Start by selecting what CPU you want and then when you're done, move to the motherboard section where Micro Center's online PC builder will populate the choices based on what CPU you have chosen. You can also see what parts are in stock and how many are available at the specific store you are shopping at. Once complete, you don't even have to worry about building it yourself if you don't want to. For a fee, you can click the box marked as Same Day Pro Assembly to have Micro Center's expert technicians assemble your PC for you. Micro Center is a great place to shop for all your electronic needs, including 3D printing. I'm lucky enough to have a Micro Center close by and it comes in uh, pretty handy whenever I inevitably break something and need a new part fast. I can easily check online to see what they have and how many are in stock and then I can run down there, grab one in minutes. So if you're looking for a great place to buy PC hardware, electronics, or even 3D printers and material, Micro Center is the place to go. New customers can even get a $100 off coupon on a new Creality Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. So head down to the description below and start designing your PC today. So today on the Fan Showdown, we're gonna see if you can do better. First up, we have Archer and his fan, Mobius. This one, you know, this one's kind of unique in that it's not really a bunch of blades made out of turtle shapes. It's kind of just one big Toriotal shape and then he kind of just plopped up a hub right there in the middle. Now Archer did say that he had sent this some time ago but decided to resubmit it to me after seeing that MIT video because he thought that this fan that he created way back then kind of shared some similarities with the MIT concept or the Toriotal concept and I'm glad he did. He didn't say that you know he expects this to do all that well but out of all the fans that I printed here today this one was at least the easiest to print, so you got, that's, that's a win. So you got that going for you, at, at the very least. Now next up, we have a fan called the Seven Bladed Toroidal. And this was created by B. Now this is, this is the first one I printed after the Mobius here, where I was like, you know, this, the removing support material could, uh, could be a problem. Now I could have printed these on my, uh, my Cutie iFast that has dissolvable print material, but I haven't really used that one in quite some time and I didn't know how well it was tuned, so I thought I would just go for the, the Prusa. And it, it, was, uh, it was tough, to say the least. Now, I did manage to get all of the material out. However, you're gonna notice that the trailing edge of each one of these blades is very jagged. The, the design that B went with here is very, very thin. The trailing edge of each one of these blades is thin and it almost kind of tapers down into like nothingness and everywhere it's straight is kind of where the printer just sort of struggled. However, this might actually not be as bad as it seemed. I was kind of bummed about this at first, but then I thought, you know, a lot of fans, some commercial fans out there do use a serrated type trailing edge to reduce noise. So maybe that will, um, that will help uh, the seven bladed troidal out. Now, the next one we're gonna look at is a fan called Throid from Andy. Now Andy said he saw the news and all the hype around toroidal shaped fan blade designs, and he wanted to try his hand and make one himself. He said the name Thoroid, Throid, comes from Thor's hammer. So Thor's hammer, Thor, Throid, Thor. Dude, I, I can't even say it, but you, you get it. 
Wait, what? Yeah, and all that information on the name is pretty much all I got for this thing. Uh, not much really to say about it. Toroidal shaped blades. There's quite a few of them. They're very thin. Um, so it, it's it's looking it's looking rough, and this where the blades kit connect here on the tips very thin, and I thought that was going to give me quite a bit of problems printing it, but you know everything kind of printed out pretty good. The material, the sport material, came off way easier than you know this thing. But yeah, the, the blades being so thin, I'm not not too confident about. But there's there's many more of them, so maybe it'll do better than what I got here. We'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. Now this this last one, it caught my caught my eye pretty quick and I think you're gonna you're gonna see why as soon as you see it. This is the inverted Shero and it was created by Rod. Now Rod said he's a longtime fan of the fan showdown and decided it was time for him to do some fan showdowning himself but in the tradition of the internet he decided you know he was gonna totally rip off someone else's idea instead of uh, lifting a finger himself and those are his words so don't not mine don't get mad at me rod said that he had heard shero propellers were pretty good and from the comment section on the last video a lot of you guys say they are they're still very expensive and um out of my price range to see how good they are but I, I, a lot of people said they're great but he also heard they were great and uh wanted to try to make one himself so rod did what any good designer would do he uh went on the internet to see if anybody else had uh, already drawn this propeller up he found one he downloaded it, he did some eyeball rescaling, some tweaking of the uh, blade angles and stuff, and uh, made this thing, so now he can say that he did this himself. If anything, at least Rod is honest about the whole, uh, the, the whole process to, to make this thing. Um, I like it, so there's that. You are nothing! Also, out of all these toroidal shaped fans I got here, this one printed the easiest, the blades were thick. So they came out nice and clean, and I like the propeller, so this is my favorite so far. I don't know how, how good it's gonna do, but I guess we'll find out. I, I think we should have a listen to them first before anything. The Mobius came in around a 52.6 dBA. The seven-bladed toroidal came around 50 dBA. The Thoroid came in around 52.8 dBA. and the inverted Shero came in around 53.6 dBA. Now, during that test, I'm uh, gonna be honest, ran into a bit of a problem. If you listen to the Mobius um, in that sound test, you're gonna notice a lot of the, the sound is buffeting or wind noise. <laughs> so I'm really thinking that the uh, airflow is going in uh, the wrong direction on this one, but I guess we won't know until we Check out the uh, the smoke test. Uh, this one is very anti, <laughs> anti-airflow. However, I thought that was weird. So I did take the fan and spin it and try it that way. And it, it did do much better. Now, I don't know if this was the correct orientation it was supposed to be printed in or if it was meant to be printed inverted. It didn't get any information on that. So I'll probably run it both ways on the, uh, the flow test to see how it does and whatever whatever works best that's that's the movie score in the airflow test the seven bladed toroidal came in at 263 feet per minute of airflow the thoroid came in at 255 feet per minute of airflow the inverted shero came in at 337 feet per minute of airflow and the mobius came in around 270 feet per minute of airflow but what i find very interesting is that when i spun this thing around and retested it it got 273 so it essentially did the same regardless of orientation it's weird 
Placing the Inverted Shero in first place, the Mobius in second, the Seven Bladed Turtle in third, and the Thoroid in fourth. And overall, they finished 16th, 19th, 21st, and 22nd. So the picture being painted right now is that Toyotal fans, at least like these, are not doing so good. Now, the Inverted Shero did do better than uh, than this thing that I, that I made, but we're still pretty far down on the scoreboard. The A12 X25 is like, we, we can't even see it. It's so far away. So there's that. Now I, I'm sure that at some point after maybe this video goes live, a lot of you are gonna try your hand at making troidal shaped fan that actually performs decently. And uh, I can't wait to see it. And if you want to get in on the fan showdown, head down into the description below. I have links to reference models you can use. I also have links to my Thingiverse where you can find critical dimensions you need to hit to make sure your fan fits on the A12X25 frame. Uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure to send your fan models to thefanshowdown at gmail.com. I need you to send at least an STL model to the to the fanshowdown at gmail.com. This is fun. We're having fun. I'll see you next time.